WEMF presented by the Sound Museum. Hey, everybody. I'm not usually political. Everybody knows that the King of Pod kind of sits back, and I and I let my brother in the movement, Mike, can uh, do a lot of the political stuff. But I learn from him, and when I learn from him, especially getting into the uh, the, the Mass DPH regulations for medical marijuana, you know, I got very involved. What they were trying to do with a law that we already have. Okay, and let me let's put this in layman terms. We already have a medical marijuana law that was passed in November. And now we have opponents, uh, people that were against this law, let's say, okay? They've been allowed to sit on this board or this committee and help redraft the laws we already had. Now, let me explain what has happened here. We get the vote in. They end up uh, pre-drafting a a regulation uh, on it. We go in and we speak as the public on what they proposed in the drafts. Now, me and Mike went three weeks ago to the Mass Department of Health. Talk about these regulations. There were some good things in there, and there were a lot of bad things in there. And in the beginning, while we were there, all we saw were a bunch of suits, okay? A lot of suits, a lot of people with money. Everybody talking about dispensary, 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 dispensary. I mean, come on. Nothing about patients until Mike got up and finally said to the Department of Health Regulations Committee, hey, uh, did we ask what this is going to cost the patients? Has anybody here, everybody's talking about dispensaries, you know? And, 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 and now, after listening to us, getting up there talking, I myself got up there and talked, it seemed like it, they didn't even listen. I said this. They said under the law now we all can grow marijuana, okay, until the dispensary is built. But after the dispensary is built, now you can't grow any more your medicine, and the medicine that you were probably growing for far less than you could pay in the dispensary, you are not not allowed anymore to grow. You'd have to apply for a high chip. There's about 12 questions. You've got to submit a fee. You've got to wait until you find out if you, you get uh, uh, okay tonight. And then your grow has to be inspected, this and that. Now, it's all this red tape. The, the average person isn't going to go through it. So they're going to make it hard for you to procure your own medicine. And why is that bad, you say? Well, let me explain. There are certain strains of medical marijuana that works for certain people. So if you're allowed to grow, let's say, an indigo that's a blue cheese strain, and then you have to stop growing, and now you might have to drive 150 miles because that that doesn't matter where the dispensary is, the 25-mile clause, whatever. No, no, no. It could be anywhere in Massachusetts. you got to drive there and pay whatever price they're doing. It's like, okay, you have one supermarket in Massachusetts, and everybody's going to go shopping there. Wow. Wouldn't you like to have the monopoly on that? Folks, that's exactly what was happening, and that's what we were in there talking about with the drafts. We wanted those things changed. We didn't want them to say that we couldn't grow, that we had to buy from a dispensary. We didn't want them to say that there was only going to be one caregiver per person. That's ridiculous, too. That has to end. Did they listen? No. They re-released, they re-released, the, they re-released the, the drafts this week, the final one, and it's worse. It, 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 nothing changed. It's all for the suits. It's all for the big business. It's all for people that want to get into the dispensary business and sell marijuana to the patients. It's not about the patients, folks. No, that's why King of Pot is coming out on this now. I want to know what MPAA is doing. I hear that they say that this is a good law. How is this a good law? You explain to me how this is a good law. I want you to come on my show, live with the King of Pot, and tell me how this is a good law. Where I can't grow my own medicine for a strain or something that works for me that they may not even have at this dispensary. So tell me how this is for the patients. You're MPAA, you're supposed to be for the patients. I believed in you. I can't believe that you think this is a good law. I think it's a horrible law. WEMF Radio Now. There he is, Michael Malta. KOP. The King of Pot. Wow, Frank, uh, that was from May 2013, more than a year ago. Yeah, and uh, we just had uh, we got Crespo behind the board, and uh, he, he, he mentioned that while we were listening to it, not much has changed. Yeah, and that's and, the whole uh, point of this. Yeah. We uh, 
we've got some special guests in the studio. But before we get to that, we wanted to talk. We wanted to kick it right off with this whole medical marijuana thing because we wanted to remind people how long this has been going on, how long this story since May. I mean, that that is May 2013. We're another year past that, more than a year. Michael passed away a year ago in two days. I mean, in two days from now, it's going to be a year since he passed away. That's crazy. And just to think back, that was May. Think of how long ago that was. And the things he's talking about, the things we started calling them out about in May... 2013 now it's it's just there's a roar and there's a huge protest i think this is going to be an epic event i can't wait for it i'm glad that someone else is uh taken on the mantle you know a bunch of other activists besides myself because people were asking me to you know stage another protest we had done that with michael in the past against dph and i just didn't have that time commitment that energy i didn't have that i couldn't do it and i wasn't sure who could and a bunch of people have stepped up, yeah. and I'm very confident this is going to be not only as good as what we did, but much bigger. Well, that's the thing. I mean, there's, there's what, like 200 people that are already, you know, uh, said that they're going to be going. Um, and 200 informed people. Yeah. 200 people who've been watching for 18 months watch this whole debacle and yeah. watch column after column that we've written, Chris Farone's written, that you've, you know, been reporting. Uh, you know, how many, there have been a lot of good reporters locally that have been covering this story. Yeah, but at the same time, they've had to listen to, you know, all of the hand-wringing and, the, and all of the negative uh, reporting that's been done by the, you know, the quote, unquote, Herald. you know, major media outlets in, in, in Massachusetts, you know. I know. And so that's one thing that uh, definitely worth mentioning we we want to challenge the local media. Some of them think maybe I'm a little too rough on them, maybe at the Herald, but prove us wrong. Well, yeah. You prove know. us wrong. You know, and, and, and prove us wrong by doing more than one positive story. Or, on, you know, you prove know. us wrong. Like, so many times we've done protests in the past, and I'll give them all A quotes. You know, you know I'm Frank, I'm very critical of myself at times, right? True fact. Um, if I'm not good, I'm going to admit it. On certain occasions, I am very good, and I give A-plus quotes, and I know it. Yeah. And it's stuff that should be covered and picked up by the globe. They won't touch it. They'll go after the worst comment that can be found. Mm-hmm. They'll look for the worst commentator, not the best. Yeah. Well, that's what they do. I mean, it all depends on what the the person who's writing the story wants to skew it as, you know? Yeah. And so they'll take, you know, four words out of a sentence and then string them together when they weren't even in, you know, consecutive order to say what they wanted to say. Yeah. So we can't wait. I'm I'm very excited about what they're doing. Um, Mass Can Normal, Northeast Institute of Cannabis. Yep, they're holding a uh, event this Friday night. The, uh, October, Friday, the, yeah. October the fourteenth. Um, it's actually uh, I think it's eleven in the morning on on October the fourteenth. Yeah, no, I think it, is it the twelfth or the fourteenth? I'm I pretty sure it's the fourteenth. We need to look that Hold up. On, we I always got, got I, just, I just had the Facebook page. But open. no, no, I was even talking about. Uh, Okay, October 14th, you got it. But I was also talking about Friday night. Before that, the sign-making party. There is a sign-making party, absolutely. So, like, Mm -hmm. they're doing a lot, and they're doing it right, and it's going to be a huge event. And there has been some controversy about MPAA, and we worked with MPAA in certain ways and also gone after MPAA. And, you know, I see all sides of it. I think uh, my comment on the Mickey Martin thing, where he posted the blog. Yeah, I, I, I didn't read the whole thing honestly because I it, there's being an activist. I understand that there's different you know there's different prongs of attack. You yes. know, there's the person that works in house and is friendly with the with the politician or the policy maker and you know tries to coddle them and say okay you know well I'm going to push for what I want and then all right this is what I'll accept and this and that and the other thing you know and, and to have the the positive face but at the same time there's also you know the prong of attack that needs to be like this protest right here where people are out in the streets and you know screaming and yelling you know that it it works it works both ways you need both elements of it you know and and now you see the mpa coming around and saying listen you know two years later we defended you we told patients to be patient you know and now this is what we've gotten nothing you know just more time more basically agreeing that the side we've been on in the street is yeah, right. They're exactly. basically, you know, and, and for people who attack MPAA, I understand. <laughs> been there. But I just hope everyone realizes the real enemy is the governor and the DPH, and that's where we need to focus. And I see both sides of it. I think Mickey's blog was fine. You know, I don't see anything wrong with it, honestly. Yeah. I think it was fine. He had every right to write that. That was his feelings. That was his, uh, you know, he's pointing out something as a journalist. Fine. 
Yeah, well, we all believe in freedom, right? So everyone's yeah. entitled to their opinion. And, and I've done the same thing to MPA. Yeah, yeah, no, so no doubt. So be, me being a hypocrite, so you're number one. But uh, but I also feel for Matt Allen. I think he is a good individual. I think he does care. I think he should join this. You know, if MPA hasn't, maybe they have. Because I heard, you know, that there are going to be representatives from MPA for at sure. this protest. For sure. So there's been a little, you know, infighting or, you know, whatever it is this week about that. But uh, the main thing is... What's the uh, ta- the hashtag for this? Event? It's uh, unacceptable. Yeah, and and Frank, you did so. You you kicked it last week. Um, that's one of the reasons I'm so excited about this upcoming event. Is you know I can't be there. We talked about this. I, I'm working right now. I have a yep. full schedule. There's no way I can take another day out. Day, you know my teeth. Have you seen my teeth today, Frank? They look beautiful. I, I'm getting my teeth fixed, and I'm using all my sick days for that. I have no more sick days for the rest of the year. But. You're going to be there. I will. I will at be there. this protest for sure. You're going to be covering it for I'll us. I'll be filming. I'll be interviewing. I'll be yelling. I'm bringing the bullhorn down. And last week you covered the other, the other thing at the state house. Yep. Patience. Absolutely. And it was excellent. Excellent. So I want to thank you for doing that report last week. For sure. Thank you. Um, and Chris Ferone too. We'll try yeah, to get Ferone him down was there. there yeah, the absolutely. Dig. I'm sure Ferone will be down there from the yeah. dig. But I mean, that really opened my eyes, you know, because I, I've I've always that the MPAA um, event that they had, because um, I had always heard about little kids who have seizures. You know, I, I had always heard uh, about that and how and they, like, mar- marijuana, you know, cannabis can have such an effect and help them. And it's them. been reported in other states. For sure. And shown for sure. in mainstream media. But I've never really seen it. Up close. Up close with my own two eyes, you know, and, and never really, you know, seen, I mean, only a fraction, really, but of the struggle, you know, that that must be every single day, day in and day out. And to see the hurt and the pain, you know, on that mother's face when all she wanted was for a kid to be okay and for a kid to be able to start developing, that's all she wanted. You know, and so to me, I'm, I'm more determined now than ever, you know, uh, to make sure that this law gets implemented and do everything that I can, you know, to help with that. And, and I look forward to joining everyone else that's, that's you know, that we're getting that process started and we're really holding their feet to the fire. And it's about time. Yeah, we're sending everyone. We're asking everyone October 14th, 11 a.m., go down to the DPH, bring signs, go to the state house after. This is... You, Put on your best foot. Bring all your friends. Tell everybody. We're asking everyone from here until then. Yeah. And then, then, you know, at first when this happened, too, it was like we were making phone calls. And that was the thing we were really promoting because that was the thing to do at the time. And it still is. You should still be making phone calls. And you could still walk in on Monday or Tuesday. You don't have to do it on the day of the protest. But this protest, it gives us more time to talk about this. It's something that's been boiling for over 18 months now. We've mm-hmm. just shown that with that audio that we played from the King of Pop. Yep. And we, it, it needs just to keep, like, it needs to not stop. It can't keep, boy, like, you know, it's just kind of bubbling every couple months we talk about it. No. It needs to end, like you said. And uh, this whole Mickey Martin, this protest they started, I think this is going to be it. I really think that this is a big moment. And I think that all the patients, we've just had enough. All well, yeah. of us. We're yeah. we're all united. Every single front, we've had enough. We want dispensaries. We want caregivers. We want the governor to do something now, not 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 next week or the week after. We want it today. And we want all the dispensaries. You know, yeah, fifty of them. <laughs> right now, there's this seven counties yeah. without even a. They're supposed a, to do fifty. Potentially licensed if you look at the law, what MPA was saying is up. They're supposed to have fifty open, uh, getting getting ready to open at mm-hmm. this point. Yeah, it's not even close to that. No. So follow the law. Well, I mean, you know, you, like like KOP was saying, man, you've, you've got all these suits. You've got all these outside influences. You know, you've got people like Valerio Romano, who we've, we've talked about, you know, who wants to come in and say, oh, the price of, you know, marijuana or dispensary, you know, should be equal to or more expensive than the price of, you know, marijuana on the street. I don't and, know if he's saying that anymore. <laughs> you know, like, where, where is he now? Where yeah, is he now? Knows. Like, these, these, these laws of an implementation He made his money policy. as a lawyer. He made his money as a lawyer. You know, lawyers made a lot of money on this. Also, the other side that uh, made you know that has gotten a lot of work out of this is the prevention side the losers of the debate for medical marijuana Mm -hmm. but frank glad that we open with this the protest we're going to keep talking about this throughout the show we're going to get back to this we got some special guests on the microphone we're going to kind of switch to another topic it's still really activist related yeah um and we don't have to lose you everyone should you know continue to listen um because we're we're focusing on big things like you know movements locally that we think are exciting with a lot of support right now for sure and folks and who are, are out there getting things done yeah you know? that's important mm-hmm. and 
we're going to kind of switch it up, but we're going to get back to medical marijuana and this whole protest in a little while. We have healthy, heady uh, lifestyle here. They're going to... In the building. Yeah, they're in the building. We got Kyle doing our social media here. Thank you, Kyle. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Yeah, we're going to get you on the microphone soon, too. And uh, Dave Crespo behind the board. Thank you for being here, big dog Dave Crespo. (laughs) Thank you, man. Hey, hey. Already exhilarating. Show. <laughs> it is. We're fired up, man. There's like so be. many fronts. Got to be. Yeah. yeah. And we're the Young Jerks, by the way, here on WMF Radio. Yeah, every Saturday at 6 p.m., one powerful hour is how we do it. I'd make a really high-pitched, like, Iron Maiden screaming voice right now, but I'm not going to do it. There you go. <laughs> so right now, uh, let's just switch it up. We have... Uh,